Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SUAS. Continuing on with college football week four. Got a Big Ten matchup here. Iowa, Minnesota, Ferens versus Fleck. Let's go. Welcome to the SUAS. The SUAS. SUAS. Hey, get the SUAS. All right, like I said, we got Iowa on the road in Minnesota for this one. The Gophers are short home dogs, catching two and a half points here. Total sitting at 35 and a half. I even see a 35. Welcome to Iowa football. Welcome to Big Ten West football, even though the Big Ten West doesn't exist anymore. Let's take a look at the pie charts, and it's pretty one-sided here according to this data that I don't trust. According to these pie charts, uh, action's coming in heavy on the Hawkeye side. Over 85% of the bets on Iowa, over 80% of the money on Iowa. So let's get into this one, and this will be a shorter video because it's... <laughs> I mean, on paper, the final score of this game should be 14-13, and that's, that might be overshooting it. But first, let's start with some head-to-head -head history because this rivalry has been pretty one-sided. In fact, Minnesota finally snapped a streak. Before last year, Iowa had won eight in a row. Um, they also covered a bunch in a row, too. Five covers in a row, 6-0-1 against the spread in their last seven. Before last year, Minnesota finally gets the win, but... If you watch the game, you know there's a little bit of an asterisk <laughs> um, next to that win because the way they won, Iowa returned a punt to take the lead and it got called back on a very questionable call. Now, I am somebody that bet Minnesota in the game, so I was happy about the call, but if I'm being objective, Iowa fans, I'm sure they'll tell you in the comments that it was a, <laughs> it was a rough call, uh, but hey, I'll take it. I was on Minnesota in the game. So the, the point of the story is PJ Fleck finally snaps the streak, finally gets a win against Ferens. So can the Gophers make it two in a row here? Um, so let's start by looking at the Iowa offense. And after that opener, we we're like, oh shit, Iowa's got an offense. It's a new era in Iowa football, right? Brian Ferens is gone. They got an OC in there now. Tim Lester, uh, 62nd in yards per play, 41st in success rate, 15th in yards per carry. The run game's been there. I will say though, I still have my doubts. Uh, definitely been a little bit weird. In the Troy and Illinois State games, the two games where Iowa scored a bunch of points, all their points came in the second half, which I, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything really to read into that. I just thought it was a little bit strange. And in the Iowa State game, that offense was nowhere to be found in the second half. They couldn't do anything. Blew the game. Iowa State came back and beat them in Kinnick. And as far as Cade McNamara goes, I mean, I know Iowa fans are going to hate to hear me say this, but it's kind of looking like same old Iowa as far as the passing game goes. I mean, the opener, 251 yards through three touchdowns, uh, average QBR, 52 point or average QBR. His QBR in the game was 52.7. Since then, he's thrown 275 yards total, no touchdowns, two picks, and a 28.3. QBR. So I know we all reacted to that opener against Illinois State, and we all had the same reaction of, oh, shit, Iowa's got an offense now. It was an FCS program, and since then, it's starting to look like same old Iowa in terms of throwing the ball. Now, in terms of running the ball, they look solid. Last week against Troy, 45 carries, 284 yards, 6.3 yards per carry. But there were times where Iowa was able to run the ball last year, the last few years, under Brian Ferentz as well. So Iowa being able to run the football, that's not really new. What I want to know is can this new Iowa offense move the ball in a situation like this on the road in Minnesota? The Gophers defense looks official. Seventh in the country in yards per play allowed. Third in success rate, second in PPA. Great against the run, great against the pass. They're 28th in DFEI. Now, the reason they're back at 28th, despite having elite numbers, really haven't played anybody yet. Uh, their toughest game was North Carolina. And looking back now, North Carolina looks like kind of a mess. So this defensive performance against North Carolina, at the time, we were like, oh, shit, Minnesota. 252 total yards, 4.6 yards per pass, 3.6 yards per carry. At the time, that looked like such an elite defensive performance. But North Carolina is looking like they're going to have a down year. So it doesn't look quite as impressive. That being said, I still don't expect Cade McNamara to be able to throw the ball here on the road in Minnesota. The question's going to be right here. Can Minnesota stop Caleb Johnson? Uh, so far through three games, 7.9 yards per carry. This is an experienced back. He's been there for a few years. That's going to be the main battle here on this side of the ball. Minnesota's got a great defensive front. I think they're going to be a really good run defense this year. Can they stop Caleb Johnson from running the ball? I honestly think they can. I have faith in this P.J. Fleck defense. On the other side of the ball, it's a little more of a question mark, and we'll get to that in a second. But as far as the Minnesota defense at home, 
I think they could stop Iowa's offense. And I mean, it's not really a hot take. The total for the game's at 35 and a half. I think Iowa's going to struggle to move the ball. And if you're a Cade McNamara apologist, I'll also add in the fact that Minnesota's been running a lot of man coverage. 36 in the country in man coverage frequency. And the reason I'm bringing that up Look at the passing splits from Iowa this year against man coverage and against zone coverage. Cade McNamara has done pretty much all of his damage against zone coverage, 118th in passer rating against man coverage. So again, I don't think Iowa's going to move the football in this game. But then we flip it over to the other side and take a look at the Minnesota offense. And I mean, the success rate numbers look good. So they've had some timely gains in there, but as a whole, 73rd in yards per play, 66 in yards per carry, 62nd in yards per pass attempt. And you might be looking at those saying, Kyle, that's not that bad. If you consider who they've played, it's definitely concerning. They haven't <laughs> seen the toughest of competition yet. So to only be putting up 72nd in yards per play or whatever, I already switched off the graphic, whatever that was against their schedule, it's not great. Max Brosmer looks anything but reliable at quarterback. They brought him in from New Hampshire. The only game where he's looked solid was against Rhode Island, another FCS program. In his two games against FBS teams, he's got a 128.05 passer rating, which obviously isn't great. Remember, this is a college football passer rating. 128 is not great at all. And need I remind you, he's matched up against the Iowa defense. And I know you can't really tell by looking at these metrics uh, on the season so far, just 60th in yards per play allowed, 36th in PPA, 44th in success rate. But this is a top 10, probably a top five defense in the country. They're rated fifth in DFEI, second in effective rush. They're ninth in the country in yards per carry allowed. And if you're going to put Max Brosmer in a situation against the Iowa defense without run support, it could get ugly. And to make matters worse here, Minnesota's offensive line has been struggling to create space in the run game. 99th in run blocking grade, 102nd in line yards, 76th in stuff rate. They're up against Iowa. This is one of the best, if not the best, defensive front in the entire country. So even though if you look at Darius Taylor's numbers this year, he looks great. In his last two games, he's averaging 7.5 yards per carry, 188 yards, three touchdowns. Probably not going to go down like that against Iowa. In their last game, they held Troy to 1.1 yards per carry on the ground. That's not a typo. 1.1 um, now, to be fair, Troy's a mess right now. They lost their entire coaching staff from last year. They lost most, most of their production from last year. So Troy's not a good football team this year. But they held Iowa State to 3.2 yards per carry, which is obviously impressive. I don't really expect Darius Taylor to be able to get it going on the ground here, which means I definitely don't expect Max Brosmer to make plays in the passing game either. So as much as I think Iowa's going to struggle to move the football in this game, I think Minnesota might struggle even harder to move the football in this game. This total at 35 and a half makes a lot of sense. So where does that leave us in terms of a bet? Um, well, I can tell you in a game that has a total at 35 and a half, two and a half points matter. So obviously, at three, I would have to take Minnesota. And I think it's pretty indicative here. The action's coming in on Iowa. They don't want to sell any Minnesota plus three tickets. So if I see a Minnesota plus three flash at any time, I probably will grab some of it. As of right now, I don't have a bet down in the game. If we're closing at two and a half, I would go Minnesota. You can pretty much copy and paste what I said in the Iowa-Iowa State game and put it here. I said I'm taking Iowa State plus two and a half because 14-13 is a very likely final score and plus two and a half could hit even though they don't win the game. That's how I feel about this one. So at, at two and a half, I'd lean Minnesota plus two and a half. If I see a three pop, I'll take it. That's where I'm currently sitting in this one. If you want to see all the bets I do have open, head over to kylecrims.com and click on open bets. You'll see all mine as well as everyone on the staff here. Uh, also, if you sign up for Sauce Network Plus, it comes with access to the Discord and you can participate in the weekly betting league. $150 and one of these trophies go to the winner every single week. So if you're interested, head over to the website and sign up. Also, live shows Saturday morning. 10 a.m. up to kickoff. We'll be live for two straight hours. We're going through 29 games. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see you in the comments. NFL show, 11 a.m. to kickoff. So same thing, two hours right before kickoff, Saturday and Sunday morning. Let's have ourselves a good week four. I got crushed last week on Saturday. Need to bounce back. Remember to bet responsibly. I'll talk to you in the Discord.